on something. Are you hearing me? Do you know someone took a risk and we believe uh, uh, the words of somebody and we move according to what somebody said and they will find out that their words and mouth to a hill of a beam? They're not near by what they say they were going to be. They're not doing near by what they say. They're not doing just what they say they're going to do. Are y'all hearing me? Are y'all hearing me? It's one thing I will give credit to, and I know this year will be 40 years for my wife and I. There's some promises I made that I didn't keep, and some promises I didn't make that I did keep. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Y'all get that one on the way home. Amen. But I'm grateful to the Lord that uh, he knows how to mix it up, and he knows how to make the, the quicker places straight and the rough places smooth, Thank because you. none of us will be able to survive any form of marriage one year, two years, ten years, or another year, if it wasn't for God on your side. But you know what, sometimes you look at the person you're strong next to, and sometimes when they eat garlic or eat onions that night, and when they wake up in the middle of that, y'all hear what I'm saying. And all of a sudden, you're like, oh, so it smells. Why? Because there's something they put on the inside that is reflecting on what's going on on the outside. And the Holy Spirit that let me understand this morning, what you put in you is what really defiles you. Because if you put the word of God and the prayer of God in your life, you will not be able to, to see me the way you see me or hear me the way you hear me because you're not looking at the person in the physical, you're looking at the person in the spirit. Get out of way. So what we're at now, we at our place of nevertheless. It's where I'm coming in. There's two scriptures that I want to read for you real brief, but I'm just going to, I'm about through with this because you know I don't preach long. I want to read St. Luke just a little bit, chapter 5, and I want to look at St. Luke chapter mm, 23, 5 and 23, both of them in the book of St. Luke. When you get to say Amen. St. Luke 5, St. Luke 23. And I'm almost finished. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Anyway, why, some of you still believe me, but you're going to be there soon. Look at St. Luke 5. And I just want to read a few verses. I'm going to get five and I'm start with verse one. And it came to pass that as the people first upon him to hear the word of God, mm -hmm. he stood by the lake of the Sinaret and saw two ships standing, standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them, five and, four, five and one, and they and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships which was Simon and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and talked the people out of his ship, out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep. Let your nest down for a drop. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have told all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at that word, I will let down the net. And when he had done, had, had this, had this done, they imposed a great multitude of fishes, and the net break. Five. Twenty-three. Look what it says here. Forty-one. I'm going to look at 40, then I'm going to go down to my font scripture. 23, St. Luke 23, beginning at verse 40. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that you enter not into temptation. And he will be drawn from them about a stone cast, and kneel down and pray, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done. You saw two places of nevertheless. You saw it when Jesus was giving those men that were fishing the commission, and then you saw Jesus surrendering his will to his Father's will. Both of them came to a place of nevertheless. We 
we got to get to a place where we say to God, nevertheless, whatever your will is, God, I'm willing to surrender to that. Mm -hmm. This is what happens when you put yourself in a position to be obedient to the Lord. And some people look at you because it's such a strange thing to be done nowadays in 2022. Because we don't see God in the same manner of doing stuff as we was back in the olden days. And everybody can't say that because a lot of you wasn't born in the, in the 70s. Well, some of you were born in the 70s and the 80s and so forth and on. But myself and a few other, very few of us were born in the 50s. I don't think nobody in here right now was born in the 40s. But most of us were born in the 50s. And if you were born in the 40s, then that just put your little ahead the rest of us. But if we can contend with you and say to you that the thing we see in 2022 is so much different than the thing that we saw even 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. I'm going to close with this. I, I went to mm -hmm. my grandson's uh, graduation with his mother on last week. And it was a beautiful ceremony. Uh, he, he, he's leaving what, fifth grade, going to uh, the sixth grade, uh, leaving the elementary, going to middle school. And I sit there, and I look at how they had things so orchestrated. I mean, when, when we was looking at our young kids in school, and I'm talking about quite a few years ago, we didn't have graduation exercises uh, for middle school uh, the way they do nowadays. I mean, they had it laid out, beautiful program, and I'm looking at it now, oh man, this is awesome. I would have been given anything to come from Miss Phillips' class in order to go uh, closer to Miss Swiss class, but I wasn't that fortunate. And no matter if you was on the honor roll or uh, uh, these be uh, uh, yeah, all the S's we used to make, and some of them we didn't all make S's, and some of them made N's. Y'all know what I'm saying? Y'all remember that? Uh, we didn't win it all, and, and you know, and, and you definitely didn't want unset to use. <laughs> see, see the, the, the grading system of change. We you used to get used, and you would be unsatisfactory. Uh -huh. But but those 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 grades that we got would determine whether or not we were going to be promoted uh, to the next grade. Right. And when you get your report card, it will let you know automatically whether or not you got promoted. Now, the way you will find out if you did not get promoted and it wasn't pleasing to your household, all you have to hand your mom and your dad your report card. <laughs> and if they see, uh, they, if they see uh, demoted and not promoted, that means you had something to deal with. Wasn't no reparation there to side. Right. Amen, somebody. Yeah. But I know everything was just cooked up so beautiful. Now, what really bothered me, out of all the teachers and the principals, and I just took my hat off to most of them, because I know we're looking at our educational system now and we're seeing uh, more faces, more uh, people of color that have been uh, blessed to be in a diverse school. And it was a blessing. They had everything just done in a spirit of excellence. And it was seven teachers when they announced their name, everybody was applauding and congratulating. But in that whole exercise, there was not one scripture read and not one prayer prayer. Mm. And that exercise had to be almost two hours. Y'all hear me? Not one scripture and not one prayer. Can I help somebody? I didn't hear not one teacher say, give God the glory. Our people of education are now is getting further, further away because it's unpermissible in order for us to even name Jesus Christ at our school. So when we see a maniac that happened on last week going to a schoolyard and don't just kill children, but I mean baby, killing babies. Y'all hear me? Amen. And I think I heard somebody say on the prayer line this morning, it's because we're taking prayer out of school. Mm -hmm. Now prayer is not in the government anymore. Yeah. So you can go to a school and see all the exercises as beautiful as it is and not even hear nobody even do the Lord's prayer. Mm -hmm. 